Gareth is uh, on the far right. I want to start with you, Gareth, because in RT we use uh, your product, Grabio. Can you just explain to our audience here at the Sports Summit what is the concept, what it is all about? Because it's, I suppose, it's integral to the conversation we're going to have. Sure. Um, Grabio is a, a social video company. We help broadcasters and rights holders distribute um, social video in real time across multiple platforms. So whether that's taking clips from a, an RTE news broadcast and pushing that out in real time across Twitter and Facebook and YouTube or to their own digital platforms or you know, working with you know, Nacho and the, and the team at La Liga doing content from different clubs and behind the scenes to, to create new content for different audiences on social. But the, the focus for Grabio is in, that, is in that real time space. So allowing people to both distribute and control content in, in, across mobile social platforms, but also to be able to make sure that that engagement happens in real time. Um, so our, our customers are a, a, a range of premium rights holders across sport, music, entertainment, news um, in Europe, uh, the US, and, and now in Asia as well. So Nacho is here from Spain, but as he reminded me backstage, uh, his product, La Liga, needs no introduction. It's a global brand at this stage. Nacho, I, I looked at your Twitter handle, and you say, La Liga, the place where dreams happen. Yes. Explain that, and have you any jobs for <laughs> yes. the rest of us? Because we have no... It's no easy to approach to the sport, and it's no easy to approach to football. From our point of view, football is passion, and we have no customer, we have fans. And when you have fans, it's no easy to give them uh, what they are demanding. That's uh, because uh, uh, when we are speaking about thinking and feeling, it's no easy to think about the products, no? That way, or using that way, or trying to give them we are also always thinking, stressing our understanding about football. And audiovisual is the new way to give them as they are demanding. That's why when we start to, to collaborate with Gravio, we start to analyze and to reflect on the new way to give people as people are demanding. Alex, you work with the All England Club, with Wimbledon, again, another brand that needs no introduction, but you're also a multimedia journalist and, and you have a background in, in editorial as well. In terms of the All England Club, what, what's your approach to, to social video? Well, well our challenge is um, we need to bring Wimbledon to life for the millions of people around the world who will actually never get a chance to come to Wimbledon. And I think until you've been lucky enough to walk through the gates at Wimbledon, you don't understand what a, a magical place it is. And so. For us, digital Wimbledon is about being the next best thing to being there and, and video and being able to create video in real time that doesn't just show center court and the royal box and this very stuffy traditional image. It actually shows the living, breathing thing that is the hill, Henman Hill, where all people come in, people queue up for days to get and just sit on a hill and watch a screen. And that's the type of content that we've been using Grabio to try and create. Now, I'm just looking out here in the audience, and I can see a lot of people here from various television networks, a lot of people involved in the media, and I think any conversations we have, we know social video is important, and we have to get on that train and go with it, but just where is it at the moment? Just paint a pitch for us. Are we, are we scratching the surface yet, or, or, or where are we at? Well, I think it's, it's incredibly new. I think we're, we're at the very start of the journey. The, you know, if you look at the, the major platforms, you know, outside of YouTube, which has been around since, what, 2005 or so. You know, Facebook's video product is 18 months old. Snapchat's is just over a year old. Twitter's is, is two years old. This is absolutely the, the start of the journey. The way that people are now sharing and consuming video, particularly on social platforms, is, is, is immeasurably different than it was only 24 months ago. What this is going to look like in five years' time is going to be significantly different again. So we're definitely at the start of the journey. Yeah, Nacho? But, but, but uh, accepting that it's new. We have no doubt that it's the way. This is the point. No? We need to be on the way. We need to stress the content. We need to understand how we can create business in this way. This is the point. It's not easy because football and the main of the sport, the most of the sport are depending, financially speaking, on the TV's rights. Okay? And we need to move from TV to I don't know where. But we need to move. This is the risk. This is the challenge. This is the opportunity. And it's the first time in our history when we can give people independently people are. This is the point. We are global now, really global. When you have a device, you have football or movies in your pockets. It's incredible, the opportunity. 
is the, the opportunity is so huge that we can also think about how we can be in advance as people want to demand. This is the point. Do you know a big thing for me, and maybe a lot of our audience would feel this as well, certainly in Ireland, I, I found a little bit of resistance to social video from, from various organizations, and it's almost that people are, are a little bit afraid of, of where it's going. And, and just with Wimbledon, Alex, it's such a, a traditional organization. Have you, have you found that yourself, that it's been hard to convince them to go in a certain direction? Well, I mean, I think as, as Gareth and Nacho made the point that, that traditional, the traditional business model is you get your revenue from TV. And yes, you have all these, these fans out there, and oh, it's wonderful to have fans, but there's an acceptance that you're inevitably going to have fans. And actually, we are competing for people's attention every single minute of the day. And especially an event like Wimbledon, where we have two weeks, that's it. And if we don't get it right those two weeks, we have to wait a whole year to try again. And so for us, the, the value of social video in reaching those audiences, reaching new audiences in different territories where something like Wimbledon just doesn't resonate as well, South America, for example, where you know, they think of it as being very stuffy and they want carnival, they want party. Um, but what's been fascinating is the, as soon as we've done a little bit, and I agree with, with Gareth and Nacho that it's just the beginning, um, the reaction's been so positive. I mean, we, we put Wimbledon on Snapchat this year, which is another type of, of video platform. And uh, the, almost the surprise at the fact that someone like Wimbledon would go on Snapchat was worth doing it. No matter the 600 million views that we got, it was about the, the kind of brand recognition that we were willing to take that leap. Yeah. And, and Nacho, La Liga, have, have you had challenges there? Yeah, let, let me say that when Alice was uh, telling her vision, I, I thought that, assuming that sometime uh, that uh, social video could be a problem regarding our traditional business model, okay, uh, our approach is different. Because if we assume that we are global, um, uh, we need to try to give people our product to show, to share with them, okay? And social video is a way to share with people globally. This is one incredible opportunity for us. Another one is, uh, the traditional approach to the product was from the TV. The angle was from the TV. And now we need to accept that with the new opportunities, with the new op channels, we need to reflect about the products, about how we are producing the, the, the match, about how we can create different deliveries from the same products, probably from 90 minutes to 90 frames per minute, because we need to find where the enrichment of the contents are. That's so, so it's, I, I, I suppose that's one of the challenges, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's it, an incredible challenge. Yeah, and what are the other challenges, Gareth? I think it's also the, the point you make, and, and it's absolutely true, and natural Alex say, that traditionally the, the revenue sit in broadcast. I mean, that hasn't really changed. There is an enormous amount of attention, engagement, you know, reach and consumption on, on social platforms and with video, but the but the revenue numbers don't stack up anywhere near to what, what traditional television and broadcast revenues are at this, at this stage. But, but I think part of the challenge is that too much of the debate has been binary about whether it's one or the other, and it can definitely be additive. Lots of the, in our experience with Wimbledon and, and, and certainly also with La Liga, is that you can use these experiences, these products, these opportunities to build incremental value in your traditional rights and broadcast deals or sponsorship deals. So the fact that you can create new content, the fact that you can take elements of a broadcast feed, you know, David Beckham's catch in the Royal Box at Wimbledon isn't a traditionally valuable piece of linear broadcast television rights, but is a piece of social video that can reach 50 million people in a, in a matter of 24 hours. That's what I think is interesting, is you can start to not only create new content and optimize that content, as Nacho says, but you can also start to exploit rights that you have in your traditional environment in new ways because these platforms behave differently. And I know, the, and obviously maybe this one is for you, Nacho, and also Alex, the traditional way for you in terms of using social video would be you know, to, to take your grab of your, your particular piece of footage and get it up there online. But what about other websites, independent websites, who are maybe treading a fine line in terms of using your footage and putting them up on their own websites? Is, is that an issue? I think it, it's uh, at some point, you have to embrace it. And, and I think the, the journey that we've been on a few years ago, there was huge nervousness around putting content on YouTube because that was detracting from content on our own platforms. 
and we put content on YouTube and we got more numbers on YouTube and we got more numbers on the other platforms. Same thing with putting content on Facebook and, and, and content on, on Twitter, it just, it just grows. And actually for a brand like Wimbledon, we need to go to different platforms in order to help grow the brand. Um, so we, is that, we, is that, is that it, is it nearly more important to grow the brand than actually to keep your stuff exclusive? Well, the two, I mean, this is the same point that Gareth is making, the two c can be additive. If you go about it in the right way and you're putting the content in a way that's appropriate, I mean, last year we, uh, we were on a BuzzFeed list of 23 of the most ridiculously British things you've ever seen uh, because we have a guide to queuing. And that, for me, is brilliant. That's getting Wimbledon to a different audience of people that wouldn't necessarily think about it. Obviously, you do have to be, be careful, and, and we would be the first to be protective of our rights if someone was blatantly abusing them. But I think there is also a little bit of leeway required. From our vision, uh, we, we have to, to assume that we are contents, we are the entertainment, uh, we are passion, but we also are business. And uh, we need to protect our business. Uh, we have no doubts about, we have to analyze and to define the meaning of the IP rights. When the economy every day is more digital, we need to redefine, to rethink about the rules, about the framework of the business. We assume that today it's really easy to share our contents. But at the same time, we need to reach the balance between sharing and business. When we are looking for to amplify our audience, of course, uh, digital is the opportunity, but also is the risk. That's why in the, in the years coming, we need to, to, all of us, all the business, but also sports, need to redefine, to rethink about the meaning of IP, because we are business. We need money to pay the production of the events. We need money to invest in the matches, in the payroll of the player. In the, if you want to reach the, the most incredible events, you need to accept that you need to pay. We can speak or we can reflect about the meaning of the pay in the years coming because maybe it will be different. The sponsorization will be different. The pay TV will be different. Our uh, Wi-Fi connection will be different. I don't know, but we need to reach we need to create the new business model. Mm. And part of that is, I think, is being able to test new opportunities, new ideas, new, you know, new content formats, new platforms, without, you know, by accident, undermining and destroying value in the traditional business. And that is part of the challenge, is working out where you can take those opportunities in terms of maybe what type of content you share, or who you share it with, or what sponsor relationship is in that, is in that package, because there are considerations about traditional business models, traditional rights holders, traditional distribution models, which do need to be protected. But if you can't test what's happening in all of the new platforms, then one, you don't get an understanding of, of the data and the behavior and what consumers are actually demanding, but you also don't understand how to position yourself for the, the next generation of opportunity as, as rights formats and distribution formats and business models evolve, which is obviously going to happen. And what about for your organizations? And again, it's just a personal experience, but so I, I work as a reporter uh, in, in Ireland here, and we were covering the Irish rugby team who were doing pretty well up until about a month ago. <laughs> uh, but one of the, the instructions that came down to us as reporters as a whole in this country was, say, from the IRFU, which is the governing body for rugby in this country, there was a ban on Periscope. We couldn't use it uh, within, at, on match day within the press box. And I just wonder, your organizations, Wimbledon and Liga, do you have fears are, are you scared of technologies like Periscope and what they're doing? In my case, is, uh, as managing director of La Liga, uh, I am in charge of innovation and global development. And in our case, in my case, I am in charge of the digital innovation and also about anti-piracy. Uh, where Periscope is, I'm not sure. Mm. Depends on many things. For me, or for us, technology is the best way to think about the future. We have no doubt. But we need to reflect how. Sometimes the progress is not the technology. It's the person behind the technology, or even the person behind the, this specific periscope moment. This is the point. We need to reflect. We are convinced that technology is the way, 
we have no doubt. We want to lead, we want to assume that we realize that La Liga, from our point of view, sorry, is in England or in, in, in Ireland, is the best league worldwide, all around the world. Okay, we have the best players, the best clubs, the, the most incredible competition, but we need to protect our competition. When one guy are uh, with Periscope, sorry, we need to try to enrich the contents. When we are speaking about to enrich, probably Periscope knows the answer. I, th I think for us it's about, um, again, getting the balance right and, and using it in the right way and uh, not not falling victim to the trap of putting everything everywhere because there's a new platform that you can use and it's this new shiny toy that you should be on and therefore it's you should do something on it and we we were um tentative i guess about periscope this year at wimbledon but we did pick a few marquee moments uh in which to experiment with it uh we we had roger federer some famous tennis player uh, walk around the grounds at Wimbledon, periscoping from, from his perspective and talking about the first time he played there. And, and this was way before the tournament. It wasn't something that really anyone other than Wimbledon could have done. I think where you get into situations where people are periscoping their TVs at home, that's a big problem. Yeah. I think it, when you're in situations where uh, journalists are in, in areas that they have special access to, and the reason they have special access to is because of their credibility as, as a writer of the written word, and they're using that privilege in a different way, that again becomes a problem. So it, as, as Nacho says, it, it's, it's an evolving thing, and I, and I think we don't really know exactly where it falls yet, but you, you can't just say no, you have to be you know, circumspect. I know, to embrace. Look, time is almost against us, but I know there's a question in the back of everyone's head here, and I'm, I'm gonna throw it at you guys just to finish up. Where the hell is this thing going? Where's the opportunity in social video? Can anyone answer that question? Well, I think that what's quite obvious is this is a, it's a, it's a fragmented and a distributed ecosystem. We're not talking about a single dominant platform. We're not talking about a, a single dominant content format. For, for us internally, we talk all about context. You know, what is the context of that experience? Who is that user? At what time? On what device? What is it they're looking for? Because that will change not only throughout the day, throughout the year, throughout somebody's life, through the social experience that they're in at the time. And I think that's what's really changed, is that the, in a traditional TV environment, it was a fairly linear experience. It was, you know, it's called linear TV. We're now talking about a completely fragmented ecosystem where all those experiences are very different, and therefore the, the, the responsibility and the challenges for rights holders and content producers are much greater than they were just a few years ago. Uh, for us, when people want to be the star of, his, of their own lives, when people are writing his, uh, their own scripts, social video is the way to share with them, specific with them, uh, focusing on his specific target in order to create a new way to enjoy our, our product. It's, uh, it's like a second life. If we are giving them as they are demanding, probably we will share and we will amplify in the audience of our products, for our product, but regarding another rules. This is the incredible opportunity. It's the new way to enjoy. It's the new way to discover sports. The new way to enjoy with your life and your entertainment decides decisions. Alex, final word with you after on this discussion. I, I, think, uh, I think one of the reasons social video is, is, is so powerful and growing ever more powerful is that it's relevant. And it's, it's someone, you know, whether they're out and about or they're watching on their TV and they see uh, somebody score an incredible football goal and they're like, oh God, that was amazing. I want to see it again. And what do you know? There it is in your social feed. And I think, it, I think where the opportunity might come is in making that more and more relevant, more and more personal, um, so that someone is having that emotional connection with, with, with that event. Guys, it's been really interesting to talk to you and uh, I'll, I'll make sure to check out your Twitter feeds and keep up to date on, on everything that's happening. Thanks for coming to Dublin. Thanks for being here at Sports Summit. Alex, Nacho, and Garrett, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for them. Thank you.